In example 5, we're asked to evaluate six different trigonometric functions. And I know these are all special angles. And so what I'm first going to do is draw the two triangles and use them as a reference. So I've got the 45-45 right triangle, where this is the 90 degree. This is 1, 1, the square root of 2, and this is 45 degrees. And both of these are 45. Now my second triangle is the 30-60-90. And I know this is 1. The hypotenuse is 2, and the other side is the square root of 3. Now the 90 is obvious, the 90 degree angle. If you're unsure of which angle is going to be the 60 and which is going to be the 30, the angle across from the smaller side should be the smaller angle. And so since 1 is less than the square root of 3, then this should be your 30 degree angle, and this should be your 60 degree angle. And so when I want to find the sine of 30, I'm going to look at my 30 degree angle and I'm going to say opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 is 1 half. If I want to find the cosecant of 60, I know that cosecant of 60 is going to equal the reciprocal of the sine of 60. So let's find the sine of 60. So I've got 60 degrees the side opposite is the square root of 3, the hypotenuse is 2, so I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 3 over 2. So the reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 2 is 2 over the square root of 3, and if you're asked to rationalize, that would be 2 square roots of 3 over 3. Let's try the cosine of 45 degrees. I find my 45 degrees. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 over the square root of 2, which rationalized is the square root of 2 over 2. The secant of pi over 6. The secant of pi over 6 equals 1 over the cosine of pi over 6, or of 30 degrees. So I'm going to find my 30 degrees and I'm going to find the cosine. So, and then I'll take the reciprocal of it. So the cosine of pi over 6 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it would be the square root of 3 over 2. Now I'm going to take the reciprocal of that, and that would be 2 over the square root of 3. When I rationalize, that would be 2 square roots of 3 over 3. The last two. The tangent of pi over 4 is my, f which is the same thing as 45 degrees. So the tangent of 45 degrees is the opposite over the adjacent. That's going to be 1 over 1, which is just 1. The cotangent of pi over 3 is the same thing as the cotangent of 60 degrees. Now, the cotangent of 60 degrees is equal to 1 over the tangent of 60 degrees. So we want the reciprocal of the tangent of 60 degrees. The tangent of 60 degrees, well, tangent is toa, opposite over adjacent. So it would be the square root of 3. So this would be 1 over 1 over the square root of 3, which when you rationalize is the square root of 3 over 3. The next thing I want to show you how to do is how to evaluate a trig function using your calculator. So you're going to want to take your calculator out for this set. So the first thing we want to look at is the sine of 12 degrees. And so the one thing you have to be very careful of when you're dealing with trigonometric functions is that you have to pay attention to the mode in your calculator. So when you're in degrees, you want to be in degree mode. So we're going to go into mode. See, we've got radians and degrees. We're going to arrow down and hit enter. And then we can quit out of that. Second quit brings us back to the home screen. And here we just hit sine, which is right above the comma. That's the sine of 12 degrees. We hit enter. And let's round to four decimal places, so 0.2079. Now let's look at the cosine of 60 degrees. Since the calculator is already in 
degree mode. We don't have to change anything. We're going to do cosine 60 and close parentheses, hit enter. That's equal to 0.5. Now we want to evaluate the secant of 30 degrees. Again, the calculator is in the right mode, it's in degree mode. But you'll notice we have a sine, cosine, and tangent button, but we don't have a secant button. And let's zoom in on this a little bit. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. If we zoom in on this, you will notice above the sine key there's an SIN to the negative 1 and a cosine to the negative 1 above the cosine and the tan to the negative 1. These are not reciprocal functions, so you have to be very careful. Those are what we call inverse functions, and I'll, I'll show you what those keys are used for shortly. But for now what we have to do is we're going to rewrite the secant function using cosine. So I know that the secant of 30 degrees is 1 over the cosine of 30 degrees. So to do this on your calculator, what we want to do is just evaluate the cosine of 30 degrees and then take the reciprocal of it. So I'm in degree mode. I'm going to hit the cosine of 30 degrees, close the parentheses, hit enter, and there's an x to the negative 1 button that will literally just take the reciprocal of your answer. And so if we round this to four decimal places, it's 1.1547. Another way of evaluating this would be to literally type it in as you see it. 1 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. Close the parentheses. Hit enter. And you get the same exact answer. Okay. Now let's look at the three that are in radians. And so in order to evaluate these, we want to make sure we put our calculator in radian mode. So we're going to hit the mode button. And this time we're going to highlight radians instead of degrees. We can quit out of that. And now we'll type in the tangent of pi over 4. So we're going to hit second and then the caret key divided by 5, excuse me tangent of pi over 5, hit enter. We're going to round this to the nearest um, we said four decimal places, so 0.7265. So now let's evaluate the cosecant of 1.23. We are to assume that that's in radians since there are no degrees written in. We know that the cosecant is 1 over the sine. So you can do it two ways. You can either evaluate the sine of 1.23 and hit the x to the negative 1 key, or you can do 1 divided by the sine of 1.23. And we'll keep four decimal places, so 46.5855. Now we'll evaluate the cotan of pi over 4. We know that's 1 over the tangent of pi over 4, so 1 divided by the tangent of second caret, which is pi, divided by 4. Hit enter. So out to four decimal places, 72.9467. So the sine, the cosine, and the tangent buttons are the keys that you use to evaluate trig functions when you're given an angle. But there are some scenarios where you know a trig function and you don't know the angle and you want to find that. And so when I'm looking at sine of theta equals 0 0.5432, what I'm saying is I want the angle whose sine is 0 0.5432. So theta is the angle whose sine is 0.5432. And so as always in math, there is a symbol that will represent the angle whose sine is, and that symbol is that inverse, or those sine to the negative 1 keys that are above the, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And so if we want to evaluate the inverse sine of 0.5432, That's what those buttons are used for. We'll get into actual inverse functions later on in the in the course.
course, but right now I want you to just to be able to use your calculator to evaluate an angle if you're given a sign. So since we're looking for an answer that's in radians, we want our calculator to be in radian mode. And so it's still left in degrees, so we'll change that. And so if we want the angle whose sign is 0.5432, we hit second sign, 0.5. 4, 3, 2, and let's round these angles to the nearest tenth. So our answer is going to be an angle. We hit enter. And so our angle in radians is approximately, uh, let's say we round it to the nearest hundredth, so 0.57. Alright, let's look at the second one. We've got, okay, if we want to evaluate tan theta equals 65.9871. I want to find the angle whose tangent is. So theta would equal the angle whose tangent is 65.9871. Then I want my answer in degrees, so we want to change our mode. Our last problem was done in radians, so we'll come down and we'll change that to degrees. Quit out, get to the home screen. Second tangent, 65.9871. 9871. Hit enter. We'll round our answer to the nearest hundredth. So the theta is approximately 89.13 degrees. And if you wanted to have that answer in radians, at this point you could multiply by pi over 180. So be very careful in which keys you use for what. Remember for reciprocals, that negative 1 button the sine to the negative 1 or tan to the negative 1 is not what you want to use. You need to actually take the reciprocal yourself. Those inverse keys are keys that you use when you know a trig function and you want to know the angle that goes with it.